beautiful people welcome back to my youtube channel welcome back if you've been coming back on the previous videos we've posted and welcome if you're new here thank you so much for stopping by and thank you for actually clicking that play button and playing this video i just want to say i am super super grateful to everyone that has been watching our channel that has been contributing to the growth as you know that we said we wanted to reach 1000 subscribers by the end of march which i think it's possible because there's growth and i'm seeing us actually growing as a channel thank you very much i truly appreciate each and every one of you as i made a commitment to grow this channel and you guys have been so kind and gracious to actually um support that i really appreciate it i've got regular people who i know that if a video goes out they're gonna be clicking that play button and they are notified each time we post a video thank you so much i love you for that and i'm so thankful for every time you support this channel um if you have not actually clicked the subscribe button please do and it's free you don't have to pay anything to subscribe please do so that we can contribute to the growth and that we can grow and thrive together um okay so what this channel is about like we always say this is a safe space one um it's a safe community that wants to contribute to your growth that wants to contribute to you becoming the person that God actually created you to be and also to just propel you to just want to be better because I think one of my life purposes is to see people become better and to see people do well. I think it makes me happy when people are determined to better their lives, whatever uh, sphere of your life that you want to make better. I love it when people are intentional about that. So yeah, thank you so much for being part of this community. You are highly appreciated. So on today's video, um, I actually wanted to take some time and share my life's testimony. Um, I know you pick up here and there when I'm going to mention I lost my mom at this and this and this happened. And I was just sitting in my quiet time and asking God if I should really, really do this. And yeah, I think I'm at peace about it because I always share this on one-to-one -one basis when I meet with other people or when I'm counseling or mentoring someone just to encourage and to empower and to allow people to see that we really, really do serve a great God. So the purpose of today's video really is to share my testimony of how God has been good in my own life. And hopefully wherever you are in whatever stage of life you are at, I hope this can open your eyes and make you see how great of a God um, our Father is. He's a great God. I've seen him so much in my life. And, you know, this is one of those things that if I could, I wish I could just shout on the top of the mountain and tell everybody about how great God is. So as you know the story, um, I lost my mom when I was 13 and um, it was a really, really tough time when that happened. It was so sudden. It was unexpected. And, you know, as a teenager, you're becoming and you are growing. A lot of things are changing in your body for starters. And obviously having your mother there is just the right thing, you know. And I had a very good relationship with my mother. I loved her so much. She loved me. I'm, I was the only child. Um, and we just had a good relationship. She was everything to me. And then when she passed, she got sick for like a week or two. And then she passed on. And how my mom passed on, she passed on on a Saturday at 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, and I remember that the day before she passed, there was my little cousin was having a birthday party. It was March the 4th, and March the 5th rather, and we were having a party. It was so nice. It was so good. We were playing, we were eating, we were having so much fun. And my mom was at the hospital at that time and we thought it was nothing serious, right? So she kept calling me. She was trying to call me during, on that day of the party. And I kept ignoring my phone because I'm like, chill, mom. I'm going to see you tomorrow morning. Because the plan was, after the party, we're going to go see her the following day and see how she's doing. And hopefully she's going to be discharged and all that. And so what I did on that day, um, I kept dishing food up for my mom. So when we're dishing up, I'd make sure that we've got an extra Tupperware that's going to go with me to the hospital. When they are cutting a cake, I make sure that I cut a piece so that I can save for my mom, right? And I was so happy on the day. It was all good. It was fine. And the party was amazing. 
only to find that at 3 a.m. on that day, we're going to get a call that she's late. And my whole world just crumbled. Everything just went blank. I did not know um, what was going to become of me. And the reason why I think I was also anxious is because she was a single mom. Um, my father had never been in the picture. Uh, he would come and go. So I don't really know a lot of details about my dad. Um, I didn't know him as a person. Didn't know what he was about or um, what his life entailed. Like I just didn't know him from a bar of soap. Yes, I had seen him, but I would not say I know him. And funny enough, I am a photocopy of him. Like, I look like him. Um, and yeah, and he also passed on in 2019. But yeah, that's not what this video is about. So when my mom passed on, life just changed, you know, because I went to a very good private school for my primary life. Now I'm starting high school. I have to readjust and go back and change schools, adopt to a different environment, um, starting a new school. And when you start the school, like, you know, everything was just a readjustment and it was too overwhelming for me at that time. And I used to question God. I did question God. I did not understand. And obviously I didn't know much um to question god at that level i thought he was a bad god i stopped going to church because i grew up in a christian family where we'd go to church every sunday my mom was saved as well so we knew church to be our life and i remember that in march i stopped going to church altogether everybody would go to church i'd be the only one staying behind which could have not have happened under normal circumstances but i think they let me be at home because i was grieving and mourning my mom's passing so i'll stay behind so fast forward to september that's towards the end of the year six months later or so my cousin decides to bribe me to go to church she's like if you go to church i'm gonna do this and little did i know that i was gonna have an appointment with jesus on that sunday I remember very well, I was wearing a white t-shirt, I was wearing a denim jean, and I can't remember what shoes I was wearing, but I just, I have a full picture of that day. So we went to church, the pastor was preaching about the afterlife and how you cannot go to heaven unless you've got Jesus in your heart, and how we will be reunited with everybody um, one day when um, Jesus comes back for us. And I was like, ah, oh, that might be a great idea to let Jesus into my heart because I want to see my mom one day. Like, that's the sole purpose of why I raised my hand on that day. I was like, okay, you know what? I want Jesus in my heart. And I got saved. I accepted the Lord. But for me, Jesus was the means to an end. It's like, I'm going to get saved for this reason. Not because I love you that much. Not because, but my heart was getting soft, you know? And my heart got soft. I got saved. I started going to church. I remember I was so conflicted because I was so busy with other things in my life at that time. You will not believe. I used to dance professionally. Like, you know, if you grew up in Lokshin, um, there'd be groups of dancers and whatnot. So I used to do all those things which were very far from church. Like I was not even close to that. So which means I had different kinds of friends at that time, different kinds of people. And that would take place every week on a Thursday. And I remember having to make a decision. Are you going to continue with this or are you going to now start attending Bible study at church on Thursday? And by God's grace, I made, the, I made that decision to say, I'm going to choose church. Um, and I chose church. Uh, my life changed. I changed friends. I changed my environment. Um, I changed my mind about a lot of things. And all that, I don't believe that I was doing that. I think God was starting the work in my heart in my life and little did i know where that would lead me to or where that would um or how that would look like in the end i had no idea that god had great plans for my life um so home i had to go back to a blended family where you live with your aunts and cousins and uncles and Obviously, when your parent passes, everybody is just there. Like, what do you want? What do you need for a couple of weeks or months? But it changes. It doesn't stay like that forever. And life started to get rough. Home was not nice. Home was not good. And, you know, I'd be that kid that would always feel isolated. That's when I started to spend a lot of time by myself, be by myself. 
And maybe that's where even the introverted version of me comes from because I would question God, like everybody has their mom around, you know, you have your period, you need pads, you know, your mom's got you. I don't have anyone to ask for those small cosmetic things, you know, and it was so rough. It was so tough, but I don't remember a day lacking so bad in my life because God would always make sure that in every season of my life, he would appoint someone that would take care of me. Like there would always be angels that would somehow care and call and make sure that I had things that I needed just by God's grace. And I don't know how that happened. But when I look back, I don't remember lacking to the extreme point where I don't know what to do because God would always provide and make provision for me, right? So when, God, when home got tough, um, I don't even want to go to details on that because it was really bad. There was abuse where physically almost as well, but that abuse where when everybody dishes up, you don't get food. Um, you have to sleep on a, an empty stomach. Um, when it's the morning, there's certain breakfast for certain people. You don't get, get certain things like that kind of a situation. And I remember when I was in matric, so what I would do when things would get rough and all that, I would just lock myself up and focus on my books because I remember I knew that my only ticket out of this place was um, studying and also loving God. So I would study and at school I was pretty smart. I did very well um, in my matric year. I, I did exceptionally well. And I remember though writing my geography paper, which was a three hour paper. And I was hungry, had not eaten from the night before. Um, and then the morning of the exam, nothing to eat. And, you know, in an exam room, like it's so quiet, you could hear a drop of a needle. And your tummy is busy sounding like a hungry whale. And it's embarrassing. But you're like, you know what? I'm going to study. I'm going to do this. I'm going to write. And I got an A. I did exceptionally well. And I've seen how God would always provide for me and how God would always come through for me in ways where I never knew were possible. So that's how then life went by. And I knew, like I said, that the only ticket out of my situation from home would be to study, go to varsity, get a job, and then start my life. I just thought it would be like step one, two, three, easy like that, and everything would be fine. And I remember that I would pray to God. I would have this picture that, God, please bless me with the family. I'd like to have a mom and a dad and a sibling and um, live that, that kind of life where when it's someone's dinner, you go out for dinner, you guys drive in your nice, beautiful car, and you know that nice life that structured life that just makes sense to any child you know and i would pray about that i remember started praying about that very early after my mom's passing and to tell you the honest truth god answered that prayer to the t in the most precise ways you can imagine there's a scripture in psalms um in psalms 68 verses 6 so this scripture says, God places the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners free, prisoners free and gives them joy. But he makes the rebellious live in a, sun, in a sun scorched land. Right? So the first part of it that says God placed the lonely in families. Um, God placed me in a family. How this happened, I remember that... Um, when I went to varsity, I was at UKZN. So in a church that I grew up in, I grew up in Assemblies of God, would have conventions, would have Amagoda, would have monthlies and all that. So I met this wonderful lady. Um, I sat next to her at church. We gelled. We connected at that level. And then I continued to sit next to her the whole entire convention, which would happen Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then she was like, no, you must visit me at my home. One, this lady never allowed anyone to visit her. She kept to herself. She had high standards. She was a nice, beautiful um, woman, right? So I visited her home. Um, and then I would visit. I'm in varsity, right? I was staying at Res. So I would visit on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, I wake up, I go to school. And then I would come back on a Friday. And then we kept doing that. And then when I came back, on Friday, I would stay the weekend, Monday, I you know, go to school and come back home. And then the Wednesday, then I'd be like, oh, it's Wednesday. And I would obviously come back on the weekend. And then I 
somehow ended up moving into the home and without it being a discussion between her and her parents and it was never a discussion to say now you're going to live in this house and then i started bringing my things one by one into the home until the home felt like my own home right and then i ditched race i stopped going to race i remember i made a mistake of not cancelling race but i was under a bursary so it was paid for um and then god placed me in this family and i remember when it was my birthday we were driving out to the devon country club for dinner for my birthday and it dawned on me when we were driving there that god has done it that i will i actually used to pray for this that um this was once a prayer and now i am walking in it now i'm living in it and this is the thing the mistake that we make uh we ask god but when he answers we never take the time to pause and say father I ask you for this. Thank you that you have done it. Because once God does the one thing, we are ready to ask for the next thing. We are ready to ask for the next. But never really take time to enjoy and, you know, soak in what he has done. Um, and God placed me in a family to tell you the truth. Now I'm a married woman. I'm a mom. Um, life has progressed so wonderfully by God's grace. There has never been a time where we sat down with this family that God gave me to say, okay, this is official. You're now a child in this family. Um, we accept you. There was never that. Everything happened so organically. Um, and my sister would say that um, my dad, our dad, was a whole different person before I came. But towards the time where I was going to be in this family, where God was going to place me in the family, he started changing his habits. He started being a different person. And he would not have allowed a person, an extra individual, a stranger to live in his house. Like it was not going to happen according to the kind of person that he was. But he started to change. Everything changed. And now I have a mom. I have a dad. I have an older sister. And the funny thing about God is that my sister and I look alike now. But like we're not blood related. And that changed my whole perspective of family. Of what family means. Of what. Because I would say that we share the same blood. And that is the blood of Jesus. You know. So I've seen God work so much. The Bible says again in Romans chapter 8 verses 28. That we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And those who are called according to his purpose. When God th did this for me. I then knew that my life is not ordinary. My life is not um, is not just a life. God has his hand upon me. And if I tell you the truth, I wish, like, we, if we had time, I would just try to lay it out for you to see how the hand of God, it's, it was like a puzzle, you know, when you put a puzzle together, every piece was just fitting somehow. And I had no idea, because even when I was praying for a family, um, I had no idea what that would look like, but God did it and he did it far exceedingly great than I ever imagined or thought. You know, like the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 verses 20, that God does the unimaginable. And if God can do that for me, because I come across a lot of people without parents, absent parents who are alive, but not playing their role, especially the father issues where your father doesn't care. And I just want to say that if God can do such a great work in my life, he can do it for anyone if that is what you desire, if that is what you wish God could do for you. When we pray, the Bible says that you should pray about all things and be anxious for nothing. And I know that when you walk in the pro process, because you don't know what it's going to look like, you become anxious. And it's easier for me to tell you now that I'm on the other side of God's faithfulness. But trust God and know that whatever it is that you are trusting him for, whatever that you are praying for, God can do it. There is nothing to, the Bible says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? There is nothing too hard for God. If I tell you my sister, um, 
in i only got my bursary to be activated for my second year in varsity my sister the one that god gave me i remember that her bonus was in december she took her entire salary to pay for my varsity fees and whenever i think about those things i'm like but how how can one do that and it's the goodness and the faithfulness of god and i always say that i'm indebted to her for as long as i live because of how great she has been in my life and that's not because she wanted to it's because of god who occupied frustrated the whole thing so i just want to give that testimony about my life about how god has been kind about how god does great and wonderful things in our lives if you will trust him the bible says trust in the lord with all of your heart and lead not in your own understanding paul says in the new testament we put no confidence in the flesh we do not trust ourselves but we lay it all to god and say father I trust you. This is my life and I give it to you. You use it. You do what you will. You do what you please. And I am just going to follow. The Bible says that the steps of the righteous, they are ordered by the Lord. And I've seen God order my steps. Even to the person that I married, it was all orchestrated by the Lord. My husband is from Bumalanga. I'm from Hammersdale. And there was no way we could have met. There was no way we could have known each other. But it was God orchestrating my life. It was God softening my heart for the things of the Lord. Little did I know that one day I would lead a church. That one day I would mentor younger people who are finding themselves in the same situation that I was on. So the whole purpose of me sharing this is to give you hope and encourage you that there's nothing too hard for God, that there is nothing that God cannot do. If God would set me a stranger in a family and plant me and make everything gel, it's like I've known that family forever. It's like I grew up in that family. It's like they gave birth to me. There's no question. I remember getting married in a Zulu culture, the mother of the bride buys the dress for the bride and I was like oh, I'll never experience that my mom bought that dress for me you know everything just fitted like a glove it worked and God showed himself faithful in my life and if he can show himself faithful he can do it for you too all you have to do trust God lean into him give him your life and see how beautiful it can turn out I know that for certain no one has ever placed their Hope in God and God crushed because we serve a faithful God. So I hope that encourages you. If you're going through a rough season, trust him. Tell him everything, every detail of, of your life. He cares. He notices. Jeremiah 29, 11, as I close this video, God says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. God's plans are never to crush us. God's plans are never to punish us. We can be bad people. We make mistakes. Sometimes we love God less. Sometimes we don't show up the way that we should. But God never counts those things against us. So if God can transform my life and make it all beautiful and make it all work, work together for good, he can do it for you too. So I hope you're encouraged. I hope... Um, I hope, yeah, this just gives you hope to know that God can do great and wonderful things in your life too. If you can do it for me, just a simple girl from Hammersdale with no mom, with no dad and no hope for the future, but God can do it. I actually just feel it in my heart to just pray for you as we close this video. I know I've never done this before, but I'm just going to close this video in prayer. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are God and you are God alone. There is no other God except for you. You stand alone, unparalleled, O oh Father. Um, you have no equal. You have no rival. Um, there is no one that is like you, O oh God. And this um, moment, in this moment that someone is watching this video, I pray that you give them hope. I pray that you give them um, a soft heart, O oh Father, that you remove the heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh a heart that will be able to discern difference, to be able to know that you are still a great God, that you are a good God, that you are not defined by our circumstances, but that we allow you to define what they are, that you never leave anyone outside, but you say anyone that opens up their heart, you will come and make your home in them. I pray that you give them hope. I pray that you give them strength. I pray that you give them understanding of whatever season that they're in that doesn't make sense. And I pray that you show yourself faithful in their lives, 
that you show yourself true in their lives as a great God that you are. And that, oh God, if you can do such a great work in my life, you can do such a wonderful work in their lives to give them hope, give them strength and comfort them. God of all comforts. I pray all this believing in the name of Jesus and I pray for a change in their lives that will be positive that when they look back they will say God did it for me too. That if he can do it for Melody he can do it for me too. We give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it empowered you and encouraged you until the next one.